And as you know, I'm not uh, a government official. I'm not eligible for government funding. I was worried about traveling in that economy class. So when I talked to the deputy speaker who invited me, she assured me that she would ensure that I get a business class ticket. Democratic Party President Nobat Mao is among the last Ugandan delegation that saw the late former Speaker of Parliament Jacob Olanya in Seattle, USA. When we arrived, we dropped our bags at the hotel and immediately went to the hospital. We were ushered into Jacob's room on the intensive care floor. Before we entered the room, the Minister of Health had told us we should prepare ourselves to see Jacob like we had never seen him before. She told us, the man you are going to see is not the Jacob you know. He has lost a lot of weight and he is very ill. So we were prepared, but not as much. Jacob Oranya was admitted at Fred Hatch Cancer Research Institute, where Mao was among the few Ugandans that saw Oranya on the hospital bed before he passed on. He was not on oxygen. He was breathing normally. He was, of course, in the intensive care unit. We tried to call his name. He could open his eyes once in a while and see us, and I could see that he recognized us. And when he recognized us, his face became very sad. It was like he was telling himself, this is goodbye. And tears were streaming out of the corner of his eyes. The team led by the Deputy Speaker of Parliament by then, Aneta Nitamong, had a chat with Olanya's medical attendants who shared with them a detailed treatment plan for the late Speaker of Parliament. They thought that maybe if they got one of his siblings, they could harvest his cells. And if he is genetically compatible with Jacob's genes, then they could modify probably his brother's blood cells, and then reintroduce them into Jacob's bloodstream so that they can fight the cancer. That would have been an option, and that's one of the reasons why we went with his brother. But even then, the doctors had already concluded that Jacob was physically not in a position to take that kind of procedure. Sadly, this didn't see light as Olanya made his last brief on Sunday 20th, March 2022. So on that second visit, the doctor basically told us Jacob is going to sleep away anytime. And he told us it can be today, it can be tomorrow, it can be the day after, next week, two weeks, or later. But it's a matter of time. And he told us as doctors, all they were doing was to ensure that Jacob spent his last days on earth as comfortably as possible, without pain. That's what they were managing. And that's why when we found him, he was heavily sedated with a lot of painkillers. That is when I put out that tweet and ended it with, it is well. And everybody was interpreting it in their own way. Mao, also who has closely worked with the late Olanya since the university days, says he kept his health a private matter. The level, he never even ever told me he had cancer. But I knew that because of the severe beating he got on the 10th of December 1990 in Makerere when we were on strike as students, he was our speaker, remember? And there was the guild president. And the police came to disperse an assembly of students. And two students were killed, shot by the police. Many others were injured by bullets. And uh, Jacob was beaten very severely with the, the butt of a gun. And uh, that beating traumatized his internal organs. He had to undergo emergency surgery in Mulago, 
and they remove this spleen. Remember, the spleen is one of the organs that really helps to purify the body. Nobat Ma also dismisses the current social media talk that the speaker could have been poisoned, saying that this is far stretched. The, the poison talk should not turn our country into a state of fear, where people will even fear now to go to a, a, a TV station and drink water. Next time I come to NTV, I'll be looking very suspiciously at the bottle of mineral water. We can't have a country like that. So I really think uh, we must confront those issues and try to build a political system where we can disagree without being disagreeable. Last evening, okay. President Chirika Gutam Seven warned those speculating about the speaker's death. Actually, we are going to go for them because I have heard some people saying that, oh, some, some people killed Olanya. Olanya was killed. The police are going to come and say, okay, you tell us, you seem to have some information. Oh, yes, because if you say he... he, he because Olanya did not die in a private home. He died in a highly reputable hospital. And before that, he was in another big hospital in uh, Dubai. And before that, he was in our, in our hospitals here, including the Cancer Institute. Everything is there. Robert Nyango, UBC News.